So thank you very much, uh, Elliot, for this uh, nice introduction. Yes, I must say I'm really happy to uh, to be here. It took a bit of time because actually I was here visiting professor in a few years ago, but then there was the it was during the pandemic, so I couldn't come. Now a bit of delay for the typhoon, but finally I'm here. So I'm really fascinated by this uh, wonderful institution and uh, the whole region here around. So it's really a pleasure. And uh, yes, I will be uh, talking about uh, team films and uh, uh, a particular um, uh, a review of uh, some results as I was told to give uh, a, um, uh, an overview for a general uh, audience. Um, so in particular, I'm talking about uh, Crystal Grove of uh, uh, a material, the film material or on top of a, uh, another material, the substrate. This can be done in different, uh, in different way. In our setting, we are uh, considering these uh, two materials, the film and the substrate, and in particular considering the fact that they can have a different uh, reference lattice uh, at uh, their uh, free standing equilibrium. And so uh, we have uh, the situation of uh, a vapor that is uh, a considered as a reservoir of atoms that are depositing on, the, on this uh, substrate. And so um, we have the uh, substrate uh, vapor interface and uh, the more atoms deposit are deposited, we, we can see the film vapor interface and uh, the substrate vapor interface is covered by the film substrate interface. So this is like uh, the, the setting, uh, but as uh, I was saying, this would be a review of uh, result from a mathematical point of view. So uh, not numerics, not experimental results, but uh, uh, the mathematical, the objective will be the derivation of uh, uh, variational models that can be treated in the mathematical framework in the uh, framework of continuum mechanics. And uh, also the justification of those models starting from uh, a microscopic point of view, starting from atomistic uh, models. And so uh, what is called the discrete to continuum uh, passage. And then uh, I will uh, have a look of the results of uh, uh, about the, the, the film uh, geometry regularity. And at the end, if I have a, uh, just a reference to the evolution results uh, and uh, some extension to a broader family of uh, pro problems. So I must say these are so uh, some results that, uh, uh, in fact, I, I include some starting from my PhD thesis uh, as I started working on these exactly at uh, Carnegie Mellon. Um, and uh, with these collaborators, uh, Elisa Davoli in Vienna, Igor Vecic in Zagreb, and then um, Shaw Colmat of uh, uh, Leonard Kreutz and Francesco Sapio that uh, were through the years postdocs in my group, and Randy Gerena that is currently a PhD of mine. So, um, okay, so let's uh, um, make a, a step back in the theory. Uh, starting uh, from uh, as, as we are looking for the optimal shape of uh, a crystalline material on top of another, let's look uh, back on the theory about optimal shape of crystal. So this dates, dates back to over a century ago when uh, Gibbs postulated that the, the surface energy of a crystal would like to have its surface energy uh, minimized. So as the atoms on at the uh, surface uh, miss bonds, uh, you would like those to be in the less amount, the, the, the less number. And so in, in a way, this means that surface energy uh, is uh, minimized. And then is uh, Wolf uh, that conjectured that this is, will be achieved when the distances of the faces of, uh, of the crystal, this is a, a picture from his uh, uh, paper, are from um, are proportional, the distance from one fixed point are proportional to what we would call uh, now surface tension. So this uh, was uh, then prove, uh, proved uh, by von Laue, Dingas, and Herring uh, among the sets that were considered by Wolf, uh, so convex polyhedra, 
uh, and then extended uh, in uh, more uh, to the uh, the general sets, uh, first by Taylor for Taylor for bounded sets, and then Fonseca uh, for the existence, Fonseca Muller for the uniqueness. So extension to general set meaning. Uh, set of, uh, I will refer to these uh, later on, set of finite perimeter that basically we can say set for which uh, uh, that have boundary that is measurable and with uh, a finite uh, uh, measure. So in the modern terminology, we can rephrase uh, uh, the, um, these, the problem uh, by considering a surface energy uh, defined for these uh, sets uh, that I consider in Rd, uh, where D is the dimension, because some results would be obviously the, the physical relevant uh, measure is the three, uh, but some results will be available for two dimensions. And uh, for mathematical point of view, we also consider all dimension in, in, in certain case. So I let it be three, D bigger than one, and uh, the energy uh, basically lives on this uh, um, uh, boundary that is uh, uh, called the reduced boundary is the um, corresponding notion of the topological boundary in the framework of geometric, geometric measure theory. And what does it mean? It means that we are considering those points on the boundary for which we can define the, the univocally the normal to, uh, to the set in that point. Um, and then we have the surface tension gamma uh, that de uh, depends on the orientation of this uh, uh, normal. Uh, and so uh, and the, the integral is uh, of, uh, uh, with respect to this, the, the represent the measure uh, uh, d minus one, since we are on, uh, uh, on the boundary of the set. So this uh, uh, has comes from uh, the, uh, the postulate of, of Gibbs. We want to minimize the, the surface energy. So uh, this uh, um, has a variational nature. Um, this problem has a variational nature. In fact, is uh, basically the anisotropic version of the isoperimetric problem that is considered the, the beginning of the calculus of variation. So an isotropic version because uh, uh, we have this uh, uh, density that depends on the, on the orientation. So what is the isoperimetric problem is uh, uh, the problem that is uh, uh, known um, also as Dido's problem. It can be formulated as the Dido's problem. So uh, the, the problem that uh, was encountered by to, uh, following the, the legend told by Virgil by the Queen Dido when she was Bergain, uh, asking for a land to then uh, create the city that was then founded there, the, the city of Carthage, when she was asking to the local leader, she just asked for the, the land covered by the hide of a bull. And so she got the land, but then she was smart enough to cut the, uh, the hide of, of the bull in stripes. And then she faced the problem of uh, finding the, the biggest area that is covered uh, and, and that is uh, encircled by, uh, by the, the stripe. And so this is a, another formulation of the isoperimetric problem. In her case is the circle. In our case is uh, uh, since we have this density that depends on the orientation is actually the wolf shape. So uh, the theorem uh, by Fonseca and Fonseca Muller in this more general terminology uh, then says that that surface energy attains a minimum uh, among those uh, set uh, uh, with finite perimeter and the fixed volume V, that is uh, a, a dilation by a certain parameter lambda that is chosen to adjust uh, to the volume constraint of the Wolf set. And the Wolf set is the one conjectured by, um, by Wolf that depends so on the orientation of the surface tension. And this is actually the unique uh, uh, minimizer. Okay, so this is about the uh, optimal shape, uh, shape of crystals in general, but what about in the situation that we are uh, concerned in which we have also a substrate? So how does this change in the presence of the substrate? So then uh, it was Winterbottom that uh, did uh, following his 
um, uh, experiment um, did a, a phenomenological construction in which he was not only considering the film in isotope, um, in isotope but also the substrate wettability. So the capacity of the of the, the film to uh, wet, to cover, to adhere to the substrate. And so in this situation, there is also the, the possibility for the uh, film to uh, spread on the substrate and to cover it. Uh, and uh, uh, this will be then uh, when there is a film a layer covering the substrate, uh, the wetting regime, if the substrate is uh, totally wet by, uh, by the film. Um, so in this uh, in this setting, uh, let's uh, define the substrate uh, as uh, as an half plane, uh, and uh, again we consider set of finite perimeter that now are uh, contained outside the substrate, uh, the, the the volume constraint, and then we consider the surface tension and isotropic for the thin vapor interface gamma f. And then gamma S and gamma FS for the surface tension of the substrate vapor and the film uh, substrate interfaces, respectively, that we consider here isotropic. So, in the energy considered by winter bottom is uh, uh, this uh, one in which we have the previous energy as before, but then now it's living on the reduced boundary when, uh, uh, when it's not, that is the portion not intersecting the, the surface of the substrate. And on the surface of the substrate, we have another weight that is given by this uh, uh, substrate wettability um, parameter. Uh, and so the minimizer constructing is the winter bottom set. Uh, so it's a dilation to adjust to the volume constraint of the winter bottom set. That is the Wolf uh, set uh, with respect now to this gamma F um, uh, surface tension, cutted at a certain level that depends, that depends of this uh, parameter. So uh, something that looked like in this picture. And in the paper from Winterbottom, these are the different uh, regimes that uh, one can have from non-wetting at all, in which we have the wolf shape, and then cutting more and more to arrive to the extreme situation of total wetting, in which we have an infinitesimal layer of atoms. So is this the end of the story? Now we have this um, optimal shape. Um, well. Uh, there is something we still didn't consider that I said at the very beginning, that is the influence of this lattice mismatch between uh, the, of the two uh, materials. So it's true that on one side, this surface energy uh, induces uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this shape uh, would uh, uh, privilege uh, this uh, winter bottom uh, shape, but on the other side, the presence of the lattice uh, mismatch between the optimal equilibrium lattices of the two materials instead creates large stresses in the film. So the atoms of the film move from their equilibrium to release this, uh, uh, this elastic energy. And there is a formation of corrugation and the isolated islands on the profile of the films. So uh, the uh, possibility are much, much more we can have um, islands on top of the substrate that is exposed, islands uh, on top of uh, the wetting layer, or uh, a growth layer by layer. So there is a competition between these two uh, mechanisms, uh, between the surface energy effect and the bulk elastic energy, that is actually the feature of a broad class of, uh, of problem that we are, uh, refer sometimes as stress-driven rearrangement instabilities, SDRI. Okay, and, uh, but actually this, uh, it's actually uh, very important. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, very good because through these uh, multiple uh, possibilities, actually uh, we find uh, all, that's why team films found so many applications through, uh, through the, the years in uh, different field, fields from optoelectronics, semiconductor devices, photovoltaic devices. And in all, the important thing is to be a, being able to predetermine the shape uh, of, of the film. So the questions that we uh, would like to answer are uh, why, in which, what is the determinants to have a wetting layer or not when the substrate is, uh, uh, in other words, exposed, um, covered or not, 
And uh, this in, in the literature is uh, related to uh, the angle. Uh, so the contact angle formed by the profile of the film when touching the substrate, the, here denoted by alpha. Uh, so another question is to understand uh, how big and what determines really this contact angle. Uh, from the literature, this is uh, related to uh, the uh, Young-Dupre law uh, that uh, tells us that uh, the cosine of this angle is given by uh, the, this ratio, gamma s minus gamma fs uh, divided by gamma f, this uh, Young-Dupre law. But this was actually uh, introduced in the context of uh, sessile sessi liquid drops, so in the context of fluid mechanics. And it's a question, uh, it's applicability in the, cost, in the context of uh, film, uh, crystalline films. So how much uh, the stresses that can be developed in these uh, corners that can be also very, very sharp uh, impacts uh, these, uh, these angles. Um, from the experimental point of view, as far as I know, this is very difficult to, uh, to, to see as uh, um, these were some uh, uh, methods from uh, a collaborator of mine in, in Vienna, Ricke Diebold, in which she had all the, uh, the, the, the tools, uh, but in the end she had to do some approximation of this, uh, uh, of this angle. So actually instead we would like to do this uh, from a mathematical point of view. So using some theor th theoretically and so uh, from using some variational models. Okay, so in the context of this STRE theor uh, theory, in the context of these uh, um, stress-driven rearrangement instabilities, uh, we find this uh, model by Spencer Tershoff, Spencer, um, for um, that are variational and there are of two, two types. The sharp interface model F0, in which there is a, a discontinuous transition between the properties of the film and the, the property of the substrate. And then the transition layer model in which uh, a, a layer of uh, thickness, small thickness uh, delta is introduced at the interface between the film and the substrate to um, smoothing, uh, to regularize the, uh, these uh, properties between the film and, and the uh, substrate. Um, so what, how is the mathematical uh, model? So uh, we have a pairs of configuration, first of all. So U and H. So H is uh, the height function that uh, represent the, uh, um, the height of the, of the film. So here we are uh, assuming that the profile of the film is parameterizable as the graph of a, of a function. Then omega h represents the, the region occupied by the substrate and the, the in light blue, uh, the region occupied by the film that is omega h prime, uh, plus where th that is subject to the volume constraint that we have, that I considered before. And then uh, we work in the context of, uh, uh, in the theory of small deformation. So uh, we have the U, the, the uh, variable related to elasticity. So the uh, displacement uh, with respect to the um, elastic e uh, equilibrium of the material. And uh, uh, enough regular, uh, even in, in a weak way, uh, so that we can talk about the gradient of U. And so, um, um, considering the symmetric part of the gradient that in this uh, theory represents the strain to which the, uh, the film is, uh, um, uh, the, that is uh, related to the film. And then to represent the fact that we have a mismatch between these, uh, um, the lattice mismatch between the two materials, we introduce a mismatch strain is zero, uh, that is zero in the substrate. So it, the substrate is uh, uh, at equilibrium and instead it depends, uh, ah, it doesn't work, the, ah, yes. Uh, it depends on the parameter is zero related to the lattice mismatch in the film to represent the fact that the film is uh, 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 strained. Um, so this is zero, uh, in fact, uh, appears in this uh, elastic energy uh, so in principle it would be the minimum of the uh, AU that uh, it's able to 
uh, be uh, such that E of U is equal to E zero would uh, be the minimum of this elastic energy. Uh, but this is not really possible because the being H1 lock means that you might, might need to be also continuous through uh, the, uh, at this interface. So, um, okay. And then, uh, so this is the elastic energy that depends on E0 and uh, uh, this uh, W0 is a, uh, a elastic density defined with respect to a tensor that is discontinuous in the film. Uh, um, uh, takes different uh, uh, values in the film and in the substrate. Uh, and then we have the surface energy that actually is the same as the, the one that I introduced at the, at the beginning, the Witter bottom uh, energy, up to adding a constant. And we know that minimizing, uh, finding the minimum with respect to a function with plus or minus a constant is, uh, uh, is the same. So this is exactly S of omega plus H that I introduced uh, before. Okay, so this is for the sharp interface model. So we have a clear uh, discontinuity at the interface between the film um, and the subset, both for this surface tension and for the elast elasticity tensor. Then there is a transition layer model that without entering too much in the definition, is basically the same energy in which we replace uh, phi zero, C zero, and the E zero with the other quantity depending on delta, and thanks to an auxiliary function that is interpolating between the quantities of the film and the substrate in the layer, uh, in this layer, depending in the X2 variable. Okay, but so it has this, uh, this form. Okay, so we have a model. We would like, first of all, to, uh, as a mathematician, to see if there exists a minimizer. Okay, and I will uh, talk here in general to the two models for delta bigger than zero, the uh, transition layer model, and for equal to zero, the sharp interface model. So, uh, as I said, this is a, has a variation in nature, so uh, it, it, it calls directly for applying calculus variation, and in particular, the direct method of calculus variation. What is this, uh, this method? Well, uh, it's a method based on four steps, the first is uh, a direct consequence of the definition of uh, infimum uh, and the fact that uh, our space uh, here x leap is uh, non empty. So we can find a minimizing sequence. What does it mean? A sequence in x leap uh, whose uh, images approximate the infimum of, uh, of the energy. And then we have two steps, step two and step three, then somehow are competing one against the other. So solving one can create difficulty in solving the other. Uh, why? Because another way to see the direct method of calculus variation is to uh, the problem of finding a proper topology for which we have both step two and step three uh, that works. What does it mean? For step two, we need a very weak topology and for step three, we need a, a, a strong topology. So we need to find a compromise between these two needs. Why? Because in step two, step two consists in the proving that the space on which we are applying the, the, uh, the, the method is pre-compact. So uh, there exists, uh, we can find a subsequence of our minimizing sequence that is actually converging to some H bar, U bar configuration in the space X leap. So we would like to have a, a topology that is weak enough so that there are a lot of uh, convergent uh, sequences in the space. And then uh, instead, uh, in step three, um, step three consists in uh, having, proving that F delta is uh, uh, lower semi-continuous with respect to the same topology. So here, if we have a lot of convergent sequences, we need to prove this inequality for all of them. So it's easier if we le have less of those. Um, so the lower semi-continuous means that uh, F delta on the limit uh, is uh, less or equal than the limit of the uh, F del delta, this, the function applied on each element of the sequence. Okay, but if we are able to find this topology, then step two and step three uh, are done and we arrive to the conclusion 
uh, basically putting together the uh, the other what we obtained. So uh, we have that the image of the limiting uh, uh, point h bar u bar. We, we apply lower semi-continuity by step three. So we have that is less or equal than the limit. Then uh, this was actually a minimizing sequence. So by uniqueness of the limit is equal to uh, the limit of F delta. And then uh, since by definition in step uh, one, since it's a minimizing sequence, this limit will be equal to the infimum. It is obviously less than the value of on any point uh, that we consider in X sleep. But that's why we need that this limit is in X sleep. So given this, then by the squeeze theorem, we have the existence of a minimizer. This is basically the proof that it's the, the same idea of the bias stress theorem. So there is a problem though, in the space that we are considering, actually uh, step two fail. We cannot really prove that uh, uh, it's pre-compact with respect to the topology. So we cannot conclude in the end that we have uh, uh, directly this minimizer. And this uh, uh, is because by the uh, compactness, uh, uh, by the bounds that we have uh, in the, uh, with our functional, um, we can have some Lipschitz uh, profile. Uh, I don't know, there can be some corners, but in particular, we, we have, can have some situation like this, also very smooth, but with some like valley like this. And then this valley in the sequence could actually shrink. And in the limit, what we are going to, to get is, for example, something like this, like a cut. And this is not anymore a Lipschitz profile. So that's just without entering in all the, the discussion here, the, actually the basis of the, the fact that we cannot always get a limit in the X leap. So, but actually uh, by this, uh, applying this theorem and this uh, uh, observation, we can prove that uh, uh, we have convergence of uh, up to extracting a subsequence to a configuration uh, that has the same regu the required uh, regularity for the U variable, but for the H is a bit less regular than Lipschitz. It's uh, a function lower semi-continuous F and of bounded variation. So function for which these uh, cuts are possible. Okay, and so uh, those functions are actually of these types. So the profile now can have portions that are continuous like this uh, uh, gamma graph, portion of jumps in yellow and cut uh, in, uh, in red. And this actually is consistent with the observation in which you can have in the experiment those hills that are shrinking and, uh, and form this location at the bottom uh, with, at the interface with the, with the subset that then are believed to, I think, to go up uh, and sometimes to, to, the, to the surface. So, uh, uh, so it's not uh, actually a surprise that we need to extend our space to this uh, big larger class X, but then we have as, and this is a, um, something happens uh, often in the calculus variation. And then you have another problem. Our in e, both functionals F delta are actually living on the space X leap. So how that now I find a weak formulation of F that is defined also uh, on this uh, uh, broader class, this larger class X, but it's the same as the previous functional on X uh, uh, or as the same, the lower semi-continuity property uh, in this space X. So actually this is uh, F, this functional weak formulation has been found. This is the first result that I would like to, uh, to present. Um, and uh, uh, the point is that this is uh, found and it's uh, the same uh, both for, for uh, starting from the sharp interface uh, uh, model and from the transition layer model. How does it look? So uh, the elastic energy is the same as the sharp interface model. And uh, for the surface energy, we have uh, uh, um, an energy in which here we, don't, uh, we, we had already gamma F, but here instead of gamma S, we have gamma F, the minimum between gamma F and gamma S minus gamma FS, that is uh, the wettability. 
Uh, and then we de have this extra term for the cut part that uh, it's two gamma f. This is not really a, a surprise because here this portion was counted uh, gamma f and this portion is also counted gamma f. So when uh, we approximate in this way, the cuts in the end would have the contribution for both sides. And so this gives, uh, this is the reason of these two appearing here. Okay, so I was saying uh, that uh, F is found uh, as a weak formulation in two ways. As a relaxation from the sharp interface model, what does it mean? It means uh, to find the largest functional below F0 that satisfy basically step three in the previous uh, uh, procedure. So the largest uh, functional below F0 that is lower semi-continuous so that uh, the direct method can be then apply, apply, applied. And then uh, as by uh, doing a convergence of the functional F delta, when, um, as this layer of thickness delta goes to zero, so uh, in a particular way that is called this gamma convergence. So what is gamma convergence? Um, it's uh, a, a notion that was introduced by Ennio de Giorgi, uh, and that's uh, commonly recognized as the way of making uh, a convergence between models. So like here, a model in which we have these layers uh, to a model in which there is no layer. Uh, so the layer disappear. So, uh, and why this is considered the conversion to use is because it has a very good property. It uh, assures that uh, the uh, accumulation points of a sequence of minimizers so let's suppose that u delta bar h delta bar is a minimizer of f delta for each delta. Then if this uh, has an accumulation point uh, or it converges to something, then this something will be a minimizer of the other function, uh, the, the limiting gamma limit f. So it's not only a convergence of energies, it's also a convergence of minimizers. So uh, when you uh, can, when you have compactness, it's really approximate for delta small, you can say that the model F delta approximates the model F and vice versa. Um, okay, so in both these uh, ways, we always get the, though the same functional that is here described. And then there was another way we um, deduce the same, uh, this, the same functional that is in this other paper, uh, that is though start with a different setting, starting from, from discrete models. So, um, and here it's again by gamma convergence, but uh, not applied to the transition layer, but to another quantity. So here we start from atomistic models that depends on a reference lattice that is here taking the triangular lattice with an epsilon parameter between the uh, th that is the distance between uh, each uh, side uh, uh, in, the, in the reference lattice. And so we perform the gamma convergence by uh, sending epsilon to zero, okay? So by letting the, uh, and rescaling the, the energy. So by letting the epsilon, um, the, the atoms, the distance between the atoms go uh, to zero. And notice here that we don't have uh, a, um, these locations, so it's a regular homogeneous uh, uh, lattice between the film and the substrate. This is uh, the, the reference, because then after we will see. Um, okay, so let me just give a key feature of this uh, other procedure. So we have this uh, uh, reference lattice L epsilon. On this, we define an energy. Okay, again, this energy will depend on two, uh, uh, on a pair of two variables. One H that is uh, the deposition height, but in the discrete, this counts basically uh, the, pi, the number of uh, points in these uh, uh, columns. And then we identify it with the lower semi-continuous uh, piecewise constant interpolation of these uh, uh, columns. Uh, and then we have the, uh, elastic variable that this uh, discrete uh, orientation preserving um, uh, deformation. Actually, this uh, orientation preserving um, 
um, assumption for this in the discrete is um, questionable. There are possibility of uh, um, uh, 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 some papers in which they avoid this uh, in other settings. So this could be a way to try uh, by considering not only uh, nearest uh, uh, interaction, but also next to nearest uh, in, uh, interact atomic interaction. So, and uh, anyhow, um, this uh, uh, variable is also identified with uh, uh, the affine interpolation in, uh, uh, in, in the triangles in, in the lattice. And uh, through this, uh, we have this uh, other energy that uh, uh, it's a discrete energy depending on the lattice epsilon that is given by the sum of uh, two big contribution. The contribution of the um, atomic interaction between uh, substrate atoms, uh, okay, that depends on a potential Vs, uh, and in green instead the interaction between uh, film atoms, uh, um, um, here that depends on a potential Vf epsilon. So what are these potentials? These are, we consider like Leonard Jones uh, type potential cut at a certain uh, level. Uh, so there is a well uh, that um, in which we have a minimum value gamma S for the substrate in, uh, interaction and gamma F for the film interaction that is reached at a different uh, distance. The bond, the optimal bond distance for the substrate here normalized at one and for the substrate for the film at lambda epsilon. So lambda epsilon minus one is the lattice mismatch between the film and, and represent the lattice mismatch between the film and, and, the, and the substrate. So the reference lattice is the same, is homogeneous, but the substrate atoms are happy to be there while the film atoms would like to actually be at another different distance lambda epsilon. And this is seen in the energy. Okay, then um, the, by proving the, the, uh, the lambda, the gamma convergence, we can uh, prove for epsilon that goes to zero that this function actually converge uh, exactly to this F functional that is so a, a further uh, justification of this functional. And in particular, E zero, this mismatch strain can be seen as a convergence of uh, uh, here of this, uh, it takes this form. So uh, in which it's zero in the subset and eta for a certain rotation in the film, where eta is the limit with this parameter depending on epsilon on of the discrete uh, lattice mismatch. So to prove this, we need that this limit uh, converge to a real number. So actually, as an hypothesis of this convergence from the discrete to the continuum, we have that we need to be in a situation of small lattices, lattice mismatch. So um, under this hypothesis, we have this convergence, we have this mismatch strain, and we get the convergence of the uh, atomistic model to the continuum model. Uh, there is the general setting in which this uh, the, for, of large, uh, large, uh, um, lattice mismatch in which it is believed that not only the formation happens, but there are other ways of stress relief uh, for the atoms. And so the, the uh, appearance of dislocation between, uh, between the lattices. But here we, um, we didn't have this. Okay, so uh, since we didn't allow that, it makes sense with, that we got as a condition that uh, we have uh, a like disease for short, uh, um, for not large uh, mismatch strain. So obviously the, the goal would be also to address this, this setting. And we started by considering in these two papers uh, a uh, parallel situation, the opposite situation of case, uh, the regime A. So in regime A, we have the formation, but no dislocations. Here we have the opposite. We don't have the formation, but we have these locations. Okay, so in that in the attempt to to reach then the uh, the to put together everything. 
And actually, this is a bit of the digression because uh, uh, the limiting functional here wouldn't be uh, the um, energy for thin films, but the winter bottom energy, since we don't have the formation, so we get just the, uh, the surface energy. Uh, but I would uh, give just uh, an idea of this because actually this is what uh, I, it, I did also in that period in which I was formally, even though not present, not present here, uh, but I was uh, visiting OIST. So, um, so we expect to get in the limit uh, the winter bottom, uh, the winter bottom uh, uh, energy. So let me uh, very briefly see what we do in this case with these locations. Uh, so first of all, here then we have two lattices, LF and LS, okay, for the film and the substrate. And there are then multiple positioning of these lattices. And the first observation is that we can reduce to two settings, M0 and M1. Um, and we can see that all other uh, positioning are equivalent to these ones. Okay, uh, and I will just refer to M0 for simplicity now, but all the results obtained for M0 are uh, with different constants uh, available for M1 and so for all positioning of the lattices if they are, are if they are not interpenetrating. Um, okay, so here in particular there are these uh, um, uh, constant EFS that represent the distance between the two lattices. ES is the optimal distance of the substrate uh, lattice uh, atoms that are it's all filled uh, by atoms. The, uh, the substrate, and then EF is the distance we do in, in the film lattice. And here instead we have a certain configurations uh, of atoms. So um, yes, that uh, are called the, like Vn, okay. And so also here we consider a discrete energy Vn that again is given by two uh, big contributions. So the contribution between film atoms and the contribution between film and substrate atoms. So, uh, and here, since we are not considering uh, deformation, uh, we just consider sticky disk uh, potential. So they are, they, they don't have a well, but they are plus infinity, uh, then minus, uh, they reach a minimum in minus CF or CS at uh, a certain distance that we saw is EFF or EFS. Okay, so this, uh, uh, the situation in, in, uh, in this setting with this location. And again, also here, we have a problem with step two. So we have a lack of compactness. And in particular, we have this problem with respect to two um, issues. One is the fact of uh, the uh, possibility of having a wetting layer. So a possibility uh, that actually we uh, don't get the winter bottom shape because we get just a, a line of atoms. So an, a, inf, uh, a, a set with down to full Lebesgue measure. Uh, and the other is the possibility of uh, uh, that we get a cluster of atoms that escape at infinity um, when the number of atoms tends to infinite. So for the first problem, we need to define find the wetting threshold under which we get the winter bottom shape. And for the second, we need to establish a certain mass conservation in, in the limit. So uh, this is the, the, the result with respect to the first problem. So we find these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, condition that is necessary and sufficient uh, for having as minimizer uh, configuration that are on the first, that are just uh, on this first uh, layer of atoms. Uh, okay, so in a, as a uh, confirmation of the, 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 so they tend to the wetting layer. And so um, we need to put ourselves in this other, the opposite, so the de-wetting situation. Um, that uh, as a note, uh, uh, we observe that is less restrictive from what we would get just using the uh, condition that you get from continuum problems. So there is more complexity in the, uh, the, the discrete level. Okay, um, so under this condition, and uh, here I will jump, so the the topology that we are considering is actually the weak star convergence with respect to radar measures. 
So um, we see an equivalence of our, our problem with respect to these atom positioning, but we, instead we state these with respect to measures, but let's keep these. And we can prove that we have mass conservation and gamma convergence. So uh, mass conservation meaning uh, in this way. So um, if we consider a sequence of minimizers and we uh, take for each of them uh, the component, a component with the largest cardinality, then these uh, components we converge to, uh, we take all the mass in the limit. So uh, we have a sequence, the sequence of the uh, uh, components with largest cardinality is uh, uh, converging to, it takes all the mass in, in the limit. And, uh, and so this replaces the lack of compactness that otherwise we have. And then, through that topology that I described, we, uh, we see the convergence to this energy that, as you see, is exactly as the initial energy that I, uh, that I introduced, with the fact that uh, these uh, uh, constants are now characterized with respect to uh, the minimum in the interaction, uh, the atomic interaction. So with respect to CF and CS, and Q is the parameter of the uh, how the lattice are, are positioning, positioned, uh, and here CF. Okay, so this was a digression with respect to what uh, um, I did in that period. I, uh, I was formerly, I was here at OIST. So, um, but now I would come back to actually this uh, functional F uh, that, uh, we, that has both that energy, but also this uh, elastic energy. And uh, since now with the direct method of uh, the calculus of variation, we have a minimizer, we would like to understand how this minimizer is. So to find some properties of this, uh, of this minimizer. Um, so the first property is this one. So we could prove uh, the internal ball condition. What does it mean? That we can follow the profile of the fin with a ball that touches the boundary and as a um, radius small, uh, but uh, non-zero, so fixed. So this is what, what implies. It implies that since I need uh, to be able to follow, these cuts cannot accumulate. Uh, and so the cusp points, so this one and the cuts cannot be uh, accumulated. So they are only in a, at most finite number in a, uh, uh, in a interval. Uh, and apart from those uh, finite points, we can prove that the profile is locally Lipschitz. So to sum up, we started from uh, the models from Spencer, Spencer Tershoff, in which the uh, profiles were considered Lipschitz. We couldn't find a minimizer in that setting. So we had to enlarge to function that has have also cuts. Uh, and then here we recover a bit of regularity by saying, okay, but up, uh, to taking away a finite number of points, this is actually locally Lipschitz. Okay, so um, it's always uh, this is a natural process in calculus variation. You enlarge to prove existence, and then you try to recover regularity of your uh, profiles. Um, and then, thanks to this, and reduced passing to the situation of uh, isotopic material with Lamé coefficients that are uh, discontinuous in the film and in, uh, with respect to the substrate, and assuming this condition between the Lamé coefficients of the film and the substrate, that basically uh, it's classical in transmission problem. So it means that uh, it should mean that the substrate is more rigid than the film, and this. Uh, I think could make sense with respect to team films. We can prove that actually the Young Dupre angle, apart from those cast and cut, is respected. So the angle with which the profile touches the uh, substrate is the Young Dupre angle. So uh, it's the arcosine of this and it can be zero uh, when. Um, in, the, in this, in a, when gamma f is less than the weightability, or otherwise is uh, a positive angle. Uh, and these are both in the valleys that here are denoted by uh, the family points of valleys VH and in the island, the island border. Uh, and in particular, we can also say that there are no valleys 
uh, when sigma is uh, uh, less than one. So this means that valley invalids the point, the angles is always zero. And that jumps that touch the substrate are appearing only when the uh, young Dupre ideal uh, um, angle given by the surface tension is 90 degree. In CASP and CATS, we, we didn't prove uh, the, the same, uh, but we proved before that these is, uh, are only in a finite number of them. Okay, this is the proof I will, uh, I will skip, and then we can arrive to a further regularity by doing a bootstrap um, argument passing to the Euler-Lagrange equation, apart from those points where we have CASP and CATS, a finite number, and the, the contact angle that are different than zero. And then uh, one uh, few mi two minutes just to conclude, uh, uh, to make a reference instead to uh, how much time do I, yes, I think uh, I should conclude. Uh, so about uh, uh, the evolution results. So notice that if uh, uh, formally we consider this reduced energy, that depends only on the profile H. So in which U is actually the equilibrium uh, elastic equilibrium depending on omega h, then formally we can uh, consider this gradient flow with respect to a certain matrix D, and uh, with respect to the, ch the choice of the matrix, we can, um, this actually um, represent the uh, surface diffusion uh, process, so um, of, of the atom at the surface of the, of the film, or the evaporation condensation process. Uh, more specifically, if we consider the H minus one metric, then we have the surface diffusion process and the L2 metric, we, we have the evaporation condensation process. In this regard, uh, it was achieved uh, analogous, analogous results in the true setting. Uh, so uh, by Fonseca Fusculani Morini, uh, first in 2D and then in 3D, um, and uh, this was actually part of my thesis. And now we, in two dimension, now we did the three dimension. Um, we both, in both settings, we prove short time existence of a regular uh, evolution and the stability uh, of uh, Lyapunov uh, or uh, asymptotic type of the flat configuration. So if we start with the initial uh, configuration close to the flat configuration, then in this, uh, uh, in this model, we could prove uh, uh, that we remain close to that, uh, uh, to, to that uh, flat configuration. Though these both were done under a curvature uh, higher perturbation. So uh, there is an extra term added here in, uh, that in, in the energy that basically penalize corners on, on the profile. So I, I don't have time to go more in details uh, for this. And then uh, there is a, a direction of work on extended, extending these results to the general family of SDRE. So to take out, uh, so we took out actually the graph, uh, this uh, assumption on the, on the boundary that is a graph um, or other boundary constraint, first in 2D and now recently in 3D. Um, so I mean in, a, in any dimension, actually it is in, it's, uh, in any dimension. Um, um, in which, so we don't have graph like uh, con, cons, or boundary constraint. We have anisotropic surface tension for both uh, material, and uh, we have the delamination. Uh, we have the possibility of a delamination between the film and the substance. So actually, this is uh, an extension, but also need a need because otherwise we don't have lower semi-continuous uh, as we could have a, a component of the film that is uh, uh, falling on the substrate and there. Uh, this could create problem in the, in the lower semi-continuity. So this then becomes a very general model that can include a different application, not only thin films, but crystal cavity, capillarity drop, the delamination and crack setting. Uh, in the situation without the, the mismatch strain, um, but with the Dirichlet condition and only in the wetting regime, there is also this result by Chris Male and Friedrich. And very recently, we are about to complete this uh, um, work on which we actually let free the substrate profile. So it's not anymore a, 
uh, like a fixed uh, set, uh, but uh, it's a free graph. Uh, uh, so the, 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 the film is a set of high perimeter, but in this subset is a free, uh, free boundary that is uh, parameterizes the graph. And so these are the works that, uh, in a way, I try to summarize and to put together for these uh, presentations. And with this, uh, I thank you for, for the attention. Thank you very much for a highly informative, <laughs> very, uh, a lot of information. You've, you've clearly done a great deal of work. Are there any questions? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Um, no, actually, uh, there is no uh, no restriction about the the thin uh, uh, so it's for film so it's there is not a restriction with respect to the film it's free uh, yeah Are there any I mean other so the, the, last, the only thing is in this uh, uh, this L uh, in this uh, setting yeah here for the subject. Uh, is it's meant to be long, uh, be bigger than like this other dimension? But this in the, in this way, one could consider that uh, it's uh, uh, is thin. Uh, if you okay, yes, uh, you mentioned uh, orientation preserving deformations. Yeah. So I was wondering. I, I did not understand fully like uh, the importance of it, and if you let go of that. No, no, this is a technical uh, requirement uh, that, uh, uh, no, yes, this one, uh, that, uh, um, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it can be considered a non-interpretation -inter condition, but uh, so uh, for discrete material, for atoms, this, uh, it's uh, not, so, uh, not so good, no? So actually I was saying that this is a technical uh, needed uh, hypothesis that could be avoided by using some of these techniques uh, here. And the difference with, with respect to this work and these, and these other works that are different setting though, so uh, is uh, that here we are considering only first neighbor uh, interaction of atoms, but by allowing also for uh, not only the next atom, the interaction with the next atom, but next to nearest uh, neighbors. So not just the one in the reference lattice that are bonded, but also uh, the next one, this one, for example, for this one, uh, then uh, one uh, could think to avoid this hypothesis. But it's something we we should try to do. It's not. Uh, it's just an idea of uh, what we could do to avoid this uh, this hypothesis. Other questions? Yeah, there is a reference lattice in this way. But uh, uh, so the, the fact that uh, uh, here we have uh, uh, a well and uh, the energy is depends on the dis difference with, with respect to the uh, displacement with respect to the site. So the reference lattice is I and J, so it's fixed. And then we have a, a displacement Y from those uh, reference and uh, the interaction that we are paying is uh, uh, the like with respect to this uh, well with respect to the deformed so with the displacement from that but yeah maybe i would add to that uh, the i think the underlying idea is that there is a separation of time scales so that the okay. time scales associated with the vibrations of the atoms about their lattice sites uh, is 
much faster than the time scale associated with, mm -hmm. let's say, the deposition process or the growth of the film. Um, and also, you have no inertia. In the, in the, yeah, no, it's a simplified setting for sure. And yeah, because it's a. Are there <clears throat> questions from the? Uh, yes, go ahead, please. Could you explain a little bit more about the uh, the curvature higher order stabilization? Or, or yes, my understanding is that it curvature is second order, right? So, what do you mean by higher order? Uh, yes, it's uh, uh, basically we add to the functional the um, the integral of the uh, square of the the curvature. So um, this gives a contribution, and uh, for so because for the L two. Uh, this is uh, becomes of the uh, of the fourth order the 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 equation and this then with the curvature regularization is of the third, sixth sixth order okay um, yeah but wouldn't that uh, go back to the idea of next nearest neighbor interaction of, of the, in this for the evolution yeah we are not uh, considering from the discrete uh, to the continuous so but, but in essence when you have okay uh, the gradient energy what you are accounting for let's say from a discrete perspective is okay. the presence of next nearest neighbor i see okay okay interesting and this goes back to fermi pasta yes. and many others okay okay that's it. <laughs> no Zoom questions. Thank you very much. Um, yes. Paolo, thank you for an excellent and, as I said, very informative talk. Uh, and uh, please, uh, how many more days will you be here? Yes, I will next week uh, or so. All of next week. So I encourage people to uh, meet in person with Paolo. Thank it, you. I would be very glad to have interaction. <laughs> thank you.